Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have, I'm not really sure what to title this video. Hopefully by the end of it, I'll know what I want to title it as, but I don't know right now. Um, I've been, I guess it's kind of like an update, maybe a slight, small rant. I don't know. We'll see where it goes, but just stay tuned because I have a lot of things that I want to talk about. So first and foremost, I, I'm in a very serious creative slump and I don't, I don't really know how to get myself out of it. Um, I feel like the videos that I had in my mind, the ideas that I had are being done. And like, I, one thing I don't want to do on YouTube is be repetitive and do what everybody else is doing. So I kind of feel like, what can, what can I do that's different? You know, I've, I've found that there's a lot of plus size girls showing up, you know, on YouTube doing hauls and lookbooks and get ready with me's. And it's like, I don't want to be categorized as just another plus size girl, just another girl who does makeup, you know, whatever. So I, I've been struggling with that. Um, I got a, a wig the other day that I ordered. It was terrible. And I recorded my unboxing and I just was like, I just didn't like it. Like I didn't like anything about the video and I just wasn't feeling it. And I don't know. I don't want to put, I cannot put out content that I'm not 100% confident about. I'm not going to put something half-assed. I'm just not. So that's why that's just sitting on my laptop and I keep looking at it and I'm like, I just can't upload it because I, I mean, the quality is good, but the wig just looks stupid as hell. And I'm like, I'm not putting this up there. Like it looked dumb, you know? So there's that. Um, on a happier note, a uh, more positive note, um, I moved again. Um, <laughs> and I, if you follow me on Snapchat, couple months back around December you would have seen that I was showing this house that we got and you know I was super excited and I was whatever and you know my husband and I we had really really good intentions for that house we moved in there with you know all of these ideas like we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that and oh my god you know and it just did not turn out that way it the house was not well maintained before us and it was just an overwhelming amount of work and it was it would have been way too much it would have I mean for renting on top of that like I'm we were okay with doing a little bit of stuff and putting our own you know our own touches on the house and whatever and making it our own but I mean we would have had to gut that place and we didn't realize that until we got in there and started getting comfortable so there's that and it was infested with mice and rodents and bugs and you know my son couldn't sit on the floor because there would have been a mouse running across his lap I mean it was just disgusting our neighbors were trash they had a pit bull and you know my son couldn't go out in the backyard because we were terrified that this pit bull was gonna you know tear through the friends and try to eat my son like it was just and it was just the block was loud and I don't I don't deal with shit like that very well. Like I'm not, I'm friendly, but I don't want to hear your business. Like I don't want to hear your kids outside. And I don't mean this, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just, the walls were so thin. It was like, if you were inside, it was almost like you were outside. Like you might as well have had your front door wide open and your window open because you could hear everything, you know? And I'm just not, I'm not with that. I don't like that shit at all. And um, so we got the hell out of there. Like it's not, I'm, I'm not saying this to sound irresponsible or to sound like you could just be frivolous like that, but if you're not happy, get out. Like, I don't care what a contract says. I don't care what your landlord says. Get out because you're risking the quality of life for you, your family, your children. Like, it's not worth it. I don't care. To me, it's not worth it. Like, I'm not going to keep my son cooped up inside because he can't go outside because I don't know what these other little neighborhood hoodlums are doing. You know, I don't know if the dog is going to get loose from my neighbors and try to tear up my kid. Is he going to get hit by a car because it's a, a, a street 
that you're supposed to go 25 and they go 50 down the block. Like, I don't have time for that shit. I'm sorry. I'm not about that, that hood life, you know, and I feel like people need to do better for our kids, you know, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other topic. Um, so we got the hell out, you know, and it was crazy because I don't know how well or how much or if you do at all believe in signs and um, the universe setting things up and placing things around you to point you in a certain direction, right? But but I believe in that heavily, especially now. Um, it's my mama. Um, funny that she texts me while I'm talking about this. But we... I, and not to get too on it, because this is something else I'm going to kind of get into a little bit later, but I approached my family and I said, hey, we're, you know, we don't want to be here anymore. Can we come stay with you? And that wasn't an option, not because they didn't want us to, but they had their own reasons, which we understood. But my mom suggested that we start looking for something closer to her. And we did. And here we are. And I'm telling you, everything went according to plan and we didn't have a plan like it just fell into place and that's how I knew that we were making the right decision like I knew that God was saying Lisa this is where you're supposed to be you know so I'm happy and I feel like this huge weight has been lifted off of me I don't know how to describe it to you like I, I have a home that I'm proud of I feel secure, I feel, I don't know, like, it's just, it, it's a feeling that I didn't think I would feel, and my family is two seconds away from me, I mean, when my son is old enough, he could walk to my mom's house, you know, like, it just makes me feel better, and I know that they feel better, you know, and again, I don't want to get too, too personal, but my father, he is disabled and you know my mom is the only one that he has right now so having us close um i know is going to really help both of them out you know we can be there for him and her if she needs a break or you know she just needs time to herself you know i can say hey mom i'll hang out with dad for the day you go take a break you know go get a manicure or just go shopping or go whatever you need to do just to make yourself feel like you know, because sometimes that can be overwhelming. Um, hold on. Do you hear that clicking? That's my lens. Um, so yeah, I just, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I feel very, I feel very, very good, you know, lately because of the circumstances that, have surrounded us and what we've done in the last month to get to where we are now. You know, my husband got, he got this job that he'd been waiting for and granted it's night shift and I hate, <laughs> I hate that he's not here at night. Um, I, I'm going to really, it's going to take some time for me to get used to him not being here and in the bed with me at night, but I mean, it was one of those situations where it was like, you can't turn it down. You know, it was too good of a position. He just had to take it. Maybe, you know, God willing, later on, he'll be offered, a, you know, a day shift or even a second shift, you know, to kind of put us back on a regular schedule. Because night shift just sucks, you know. It's like he's gone and then he gets home in the morning and he goes to sleep. And then by the time he gets up, it's like... I've already done everything I needed to do that day without him, and it just, it doesn't feel right, but he has the weekends off, so that'll be our time to catch up and stuff, but, um, other than that, the, right now, I would say, that's probably counting, accounting for a good 80% of the happiness that I feel in my life right now. Um, I am not losing any weight right now. I am stuck in the 220s. Actually, I've gained a little bit because of my monthly cycle and bloating and water retention and all that other stupid shit. But um, I try not to weigh myself when I'm getting my period, but I'm obsessed with the scale. 
we've said this, you know this, uh, whatever. Um, so I've been really battling with this, this like looming fear that I'm not going to lose anymore. You know, I'm a year and three months out. Yes, yeah, January, February, March. March 16th will be a year and three months since I've had surgery. I've lost 135 pounds thus far, which is a lot of fucking weight, right? For a year and three months, I feel like it is. But I'm still, I'm still big. I'm still overweight. I'm still obese. I'm still big. And I don't want to be big anymore. Like, I don't. And now, to top that off, and I said it, touched on this a little bit in my last update video, but I have skin and I can't fucking stand it. Like, I hate it. I hate my boobs. I hate my arms, my inner, like, I hate that shit. It's like, I just want it gone. Like, I don't want to be reminded of what the fuck I did to my body for, you know, 20 plus years. Like, I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to look, like, I... I just don't feel good when I take my clothes off. I don't, you know, and I, I hate. I don't want to, I don't want to go back to feeling how I felt when I was 358 pounds and I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't stand the sight of myself, you know, but I'm fighting that because I see, I see that I've lost weight, you know, I, I see it, but I just, I don't, I don't like what I see, you know, and then it's like, I'm, I feel stuck again. I feel like, you know, I'm like, what if I don't lose anymore? I don't want to be 220 pounds. I want to be under 200. That was my goal. Even if I get to 199.9, you know. So I, and it's, it's hard, you know, I, again, if you follow me on Snapchat, I, Snapchat and YouTube right now are the only um, forms of social media that I am active on because I deleted Facebook and I deleted Twitter and I deleted Instagram because I was tired of seeing the things that I was seeing. I was tired of seeing these fucking perfect bitches left and right. And, and that was making me feel inadequate and I couldn't stop looking at them because it's like, I, I want so badly to look like that. And it's sickening. Like I dream about my body afterwards. You know, I dream about, I've had dreams where I'm looking at my, my boobs and they're, they're, they're perky and full and I don't need a bra, you know, I'm, I, I've dreamt about my stomach being flat, you know, my thighs being smaller. And, and it may sound dumb and delusional to some people, but when you've never had that shit before, like, you, you can't stop thinking about it. And, you know, losing, losing all of this weight and seeing myself in a different way has changed me tremendously and as confident as I feel I find myself still feeling insecure about my body I don't feel comfortable naked in front of my husband I don't and it doesn't matter how beautiful he tells me that I am or that he doesn't see yeah he doesn't see what I see I don't feel good I feel like I'm loose, like I'm, I'm jiggly and it's disgusting. Like I don't, and I'm really emotional because I have my period. So please forgive me, but I don't feel good. You know, I feel fine with clothes on. I do. I feel very confident with clothes on, but as soon as it comes time for me to take them off and to be naked or to even have a sleeveless, you know, a tank top on to go to sleep. I hate that my arms are hanging out and I can't lay in the bed with my husband or my son without one of them leaning on, on my skin. Like they lean on it and it hurts or my, my boobs, 
when I lay down, they just, there's nothing there, you know, it's, it just gets to me, I don't, I don't feel like I, like a 30 year old woman should feel, this is, this is the prime of my life, you know, I, I don't feel sexy, I don't feel any of those things. So I just can't wait. I can't wait until I start the the process of getting the skin removed off of me and I can move the fuck on from this. And I'm not saying that that's a cure for everything because obviously I still have emotional issues <laughs> that I have to deal with, but I'm dealing with them currently, you know? So I... It's very hard. And I've found that lately, which is another reason why I got the hell off of social media, is that I'm being judged. I'm being categorized and without people knowing anything about me. And, I, and that shit just irks me. Like, I've talked about this before, and, and, and again, I say it, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. This is not to sound vain. It is not to sound conceited. But there is a difference between being a big girl and being a big, pretty girl. When you have a face and people acknowledge it, and you've constantly been complimented on that, and now your body is starting to match it, People forget that you were once a big girl, even though I still am a big girl, but um, I was bigger. So people see me and they see this curvy, you know, girl with the long hair or you know, her wig on, her makeup is on fleek and eyebrows and whatever. And they'd be like, who does she think she is? Oh, she thinks she cute. Oh, she's too, you know, she's what this and that. And they had no no idea what the fuck I've been through. Not, not a clue. I had an experience recently where I was out with my husband. We were out and to make a long story short, there was this girl and I hate that I have to automatically assume that somebody is hating on me I don't want it to be that. I don't even feel like it should be that, but I don't understand what else it would be. Why else would you be giving me dirty looks? Why else would you make it a point to be extra in my presence? What, what could it be? It, it can't be because you find me attractive and you want to be my friend or you think I'm intriguing. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't have that look on your face. You wouldn't be snarling at me, right? If I see a pretty girl and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. I'll try to get her attention so I can tell her, hey, you're beautiful. I love your outfit. I love your hair. I love this. Whatever it is. I wouldn't be like, the whole time. Like that, you're obviously, you have something against me. What it is, I don't know. The only thing that I can base it, uh, the only thing that I can think of in my mind is it's my looks because you know nothing about me. You don't know shit about me to not like me. It's not that you, it's not like you can say, well, I know that uh, she smokes a lot of weed or she's a hoe or, you know, she's mean or whatever. All you know is what I look like. And based off of that, you don't like me. Why? And you know what the fucked up part is? It's usually other big girls. Explain that to me. I don't get it. What is your, what, what? Like, I don't. I just feel like the hate, the cattiness, in the, I don't even want to call it a community because it's not a community to me. A community sticks together. A community backs each other up. A community doesn't bash each other or make each other feel bad. And I can pretty much 
guarantee that majority of the hate that I've received is from other big girls or other girls who've had surgery. Why? I don't know. But that's just the way it's been. You know, and I wish that I could... I wish I could make a movie about my life. I wish people could see the shit that I've been through. You know, I wish people could see when I used to be in tears on the school bus because I was getting made fun of. You know, when I had to participate in gym class and I, I, I would run the drills and other girls would be laughing at me because I was my boobs and my stomach and everything was just flopping around as I ran, even though I was trying my hardest. I was trying my hardest to, to fit in and to not be noticed for that. I wanted so badly for people to like me for me and some of them did but and it's crazy that I'm 30 years old and experiences that I've been through when I was in middle school still make me cry because that shit does not go away. So now as this pretty you know big girl representing for the other big girls and when people don't like me it brings me back to this point because like you don't fucking know what i've been through i just wish that this world this society that we live in wasn't so damn mean you know, I, I've I've been off of social media probably for a month, but that doesn't it doesn't excuse me that doesn't um, protect me from seeing things and hearing things and people are so cool, you know, and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Like here I am being open and transparent and. Trying to, you know, maybe maybe motivate the next girl. And I'll post a picture and I get, you know, I, I still get caught fat. And that's not fair. It's not fair because I'm working so hard to, um, excuse me. I'm working so hard to improve my body and improve my health and live longer. And when people see me, they just see a big girl. Oh, she needs to lose weight. Bitch, I've lost 135 pounds. This shit's not easy. That's what I don't get. Like, don't people know? Like, if it was easy, you, you would do it. How do you know when you see somebody who's big, how do you know they're not trying to lose the weight currently? And here you are talking shit. Here you are talking shit about what they're eating or she needs to exercise. How do you know that she doesn't exercise? It's the shit that gets to me. Like you don't know where somebody's at in their journey. You don't know where they're at. And you're just talking shit. You could, you could set them back so far by that. This shit makes people kill themselves, okay? Depression and, and insecurity, people take their lives off of this shit. I would be lying if I said that I never dealt with that before. When I was a teenager in my most crucial, crucial developmental stages of my life, where I had no idea who the fuck I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I belonged in life, in society. I didn't fit in in my family. I didn't fit in with my friends. I was heavy and I was insecure and I was sad and I was mad. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't sometimes think that maybe I shouldn't be around anymore. I thought that maybe life for other people and life for me would be easier if I was not here. 
because I would I was going through so much with my parents and I would say to them maybe I just maybe for your sake and everybody's sake I'll just I'll just go I I want so badly for people to so just just take a take a minute and before you say something mean or you judge for one second just think about it think about what you could what your words can do to somebody you know it's and it's not just for people who are overweight it's people and it's everybody you know there's people who are thinner who get made fun of for not being big enough you know it's Transgender people are constantly, you know, their suicide rate is, is so high. They're being killed for being who they are. You know, it, it's a sad and terrifying world that we live in. And I can't, me, you know, getting off of social media was my little way of kind of guarding myself from that. I didn't want to see that shit anymore. You know, so I I stopped, and uh, maybe my my YouTube channel will take a hit for it because I'm not promoting myself properly. But fuck it, it's not that serious to me. As as successful I, as I would love to be, and I dream to be, and I I'm working to be on YouTube. I'm not gonna sacrifice my sanity for it. I'm not. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just this pretty whatever you want to call me who just sits around and wants people to like her selfies on Instagram. And No, bitch, I've worked very fucking hard to feel the way that I feel right now. I have. You know, I, I had a, an experience with someone on, on Instagram at one point who... I went to her page and I was blocked. She was someone who had uh, vertical sleeve surgery. And if you're watching this, hi. And I'm like, why am I blocked? Like, what did I, I don't even know you. Like, I'm pretty sure I've come to your page and liked a couple pictures and I followed her. And um, so I was like, okay, whatever. So anyway, at some point we ex exchanged words and she said, I probably still have this message saved, that the reason she blocked me is she didn't want to be a part of my fan club liking my pictures and telling me how pretty I am all day. Okay. What, can somebody please, maybe, maybe I need to get Mark Zuckerberg to come Explain to me what Instagram is about. Isn't it not to take pictures and post them of yourself? No? Because maybe I had it all fucked up this whole time. I'm pretty sure that's what it was for. And if I'm posting a selfie, why is that affecting you so much? Why would the quality of my pictures take a toll on your life to the point where you needed to block me? Sounds like you have insecurity problems, not I. Because of course, when another woman comes at another woman, the first thing she does is call you insecure. Oh, you're hating. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm wanting to know why you blocked me. That's all. And obviously you blocked me because you couldn't stand the sight of me. So who's the insecure one? I see pretty bitches all the time. I don't block them. <laughs> what? So that's, that's the shit that I have had enough of. Do I get a lot of positivity on social media? Yes. Do I get a lot of love, a lot of inboxes from people saying they are so glad to have found me? Yes. And it's those people that I wish I could filter and keep in a little, a little circle, a little box of, that I would mark positivity. And when I needed a pick me up, like right now, I would, I would go to them and I would say, guys, I'm feeling a little down right now. You know, can you, can you, can you help me? And I would read those messages from those girls that, would, that said, you know, 
seeing you made me decide to have surgery. And it's the best thing I ever did. Or thank you for your video. Or thank you for posting your, your before and after. We have very similar body types. And I'm so, I'm so excited for my future because I see your results. That's the shit that I wish I could surround myself with all the time. But I can't because it's too much negativity that follows that too. I post a, a, a before and after picture and, and for as many good comments as I get, I get those few in there that they got it. They have to say something negative. And it's like, why? Why are you raining on my parade? Why? What does it do for your life? What? I, I, I felt defeated. I felt like I was doing too much. And I can I can say this with all honesty that when I deactivated all of my accounts, things started to go better for me. My life changed a little bit. Po I, I felt more positive because honestly there was a point and even my husband acknowledged it like where we felt like we were being attacked, you know? Like Something, there was just negativity coming at us and we couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And I don't want to say that it was social media because I don't know that for sure. But I feel like maybe we exposed ourselves too much. And we put ourselves out there because what... I'm sorry, I have indigestion. I'm so sorry that I keep going... <laughs> I'm just like trying to burp. I just think that, you know... People, there are people who don't want to see you do well. There are people who don't want you to succeed. For whatever reason, they, they don't want you to be happy. And they will give off negativity and it will surround you. And unless you recognize it, it will slowly chip away at you. And I caught that shit before it got too far. And I said, you know what? This is not that serious. I don't care how many followers I have. I don't care. I'm sorry. It, it's just not worth it to me. Will I ever go back? Probably at some point. I'll probably start over and start over with new accounts and be very, very selective as to who I expose myself to. I say expose like I'm like, ah, no, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I just. It's too much fakeness. It's too much fake shit going on. Like, fronting ass people pretending to be happy. And I didn't want to be one of those people. Because there were times where I wasn't happy. There were times where I was fucking mad. Or I was depressed. Or I was sad. Or I was whatever. Unmotivated. But you can't put that stuff out. You gotta put the, the, the happy and the frilly and the ooh ooh ha ha look at me and whatever. No. I'm not, I'm not like that. This is, this is me right now. Raw and real and emotional as hell. <laughs> like, so that's, that's the, that's the decision that I came to and I feel good about it. Do I miss it? Yeah. You know, my phone's dry as fuck. It's boring. <laughs> but I've been reading more. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I've been playing The Sims, which I love. I don't know if I ever talk about this, but I love The Sims. I've played it since like, I think The Sims 2 or something. And now it's The Sims 4 and like, I just play it for hours. I build houses and I decorate them and I put pretty little families in them. <laughs> and then I delete it all and I start over again. And I download mods, like, updated furniture and clothing and my sims are the shit watch my snapchat i snap them sometimes and it's it kind of like i've always been into like that kind of like virtual like i guess because being that i've you know i was always big and when i would create these characters they were who i would want to look like you know when i in my head i'd be like that's me when i get myself together um so it's kind of therapeutic in a way, like I just like to sit there and just, you know, build things. And the weather's been really nice here. 
lately. So, you know, my son and I have been outside. We were out t outside yesterday and I have, I have a yard now with no neighbors and I can lay out there and we laid a blanket in the grass and we just, we just laid in the sun and it felt good. You know, we go out and we play ball and he rides his bike and it's just, it's good, you know, and I've been really taking care of my home and decorating and I'm going to do a little DIY series on here coming up. i got some projects that I want to do and I'm like, I might as well film them, you know, so you guys can kind of see what I'm going to do. But I think that's it. I didn't know, like I said, I filmed that stupid wig unboxing video and I was just like, it just made me feel shitty because it's like, this sucks. Like, what, what am I going to film? I was waiting for that wig because I was like, okay, I need to film a video this week. I have to. I said I was going to film once a week. What am I going to film? And that wig came and it was like, <clears throat> and I was like, now what? So I was texting my friend Shanice. Hey, Shanice. Uh, who I did the Valentine's Day collab with. I'll link her video, her channel down below. She just did a video on her vanity, um, which I want to do a vanity with lights as well. It's, look, hers looks amazing. But we were texting and I was like, you know, I feel like I'm in a creative slump. Like I don't have any new clothes to do, like a get ready with me or whatever. And she was like, you don't need money to do videos. She was like, you know, if she was like, I don't have a lot of money and I'm not going to be going broke for YouTube. If people can't watch me for me, then I don't want them watching at all. And I was like, you're right. You know, you're right. And, and that's when I was like, why don't I just sit in front of the camera and talk? And just talk about what's been going on and let you guys know that I'm in a creative slump. Do you have any ideas? Like, Anything you would want to see. You know, I, I do plan on ordering some other wigs. When? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully this week. You know, vlogging. Yes? No? Maybe? I have some footage of that. The DIYs. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm like, what, what can I do? Like, I don't know. So, hopefully, I'll come up out of this little, little slump that I'm in. But I just don't want to, I don't want to be like everybody else. And I know that I'm not, you know, I know that I'm different, whatever. But I don't want to produce the same content. And then, like, this will be the last thing that I say, hopefully. <laughs> I, I watch YouTube a lot, and I look at these other girls, and I... I look at them with, you know, 100,000, 300,000, 500,000 subscribers, and I'm just like, am I ever going to get there? You know, am I ever going to get to the point where YouTube is my, is my job? And I don't want you to think that I'm doing it for the money. That's not it when I say job. I mean, that is my profession. You know, I am a YouTuber, and... That's what I do full time, which means to me, and that translates to me that I do what I love because I feel like YouTube doesn't put you in a specific category. It does, but it doesn't. Let me explain. I can do videos on the things that I love. I can do videos on makeup. I can do videos on hair. I can do videos on fitness. I can do videos on food. I can do videos on The Sims. <laughs> like, I can do what I want, and that's what I want for my life. That's why I want YouTube to be my career. Is it lucrative? Of course, because you know you should be compensated. It takes time and money and equipment and all of those things to make these videos, quality videos for people. Um, but that's not my motivation. My motivation is to be able to wake up every day and do what I love. That's it. So I, I do feel a little down every once in a while when I look at the analytics on my channel and I'm like, you know, I know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, like, I'm doing pretty good, you know, I mean, for, I don't get paid or anything like that, but I mean, I get a lot of views, and my subscriber count grows daily, which is amazing, and I'm grateful for that, thank you, but it's hard not to look at the bigger ones and be like, damn, I want to be there, <laughs> like, I, I want to know what it feels like when you hit 10k, you know, you hit 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, like, when YouTube sends you a plaque, like, girl, you did that, I, I just... 
I hope that that happens for me one day. And you know, I, I I'm one of those people that hasn't accomplished much in their life because I never stuck to anything. I always gave up. But this is something that I did not give up on, and I refuse to give up on because I can't I can't fail myself again. You know, I can't. So that's that. I feel better now. Thank you for listening. If anything, I'll use YouTube as my diary <laughs> because it's just sometimes I need to talk and I don't know what I want to say. I don't know how it's going to come out. I don't know where it's going to go, but it needs to get out, you know. I, I recently watched my um, surgery regrets video and I've come a long way from that, you know, I have. And I'm proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself for... For becoming who I'm becoming and, and you know, as, as, that, as sad as I am sometimes and judgmental as I am about my body and where it is, I have come a long way and I have to remind myself of that daily. Like Lisa, you're not her anymore. You're not 358 pounds anymore. You're not. You can do things. You can experience things. You are worthy, you know, and I, I have to... <clears throat> I really have to tell myself these things like it sounds psycho but I have to say it because if I don't I will revert back to that introverted insecure depressed girl that I was and I don't ever 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 want to feel like that again ever so that's basically everything I think I um I appreciate Again, I say that I try to say it in words or tight or texting in my videos, but I appreciate you guys more than you know, and I appreciate you for watching my videos and subscribing to me and leaving me nice comments because I I am putting a lot of effort into these videos. Not, not this one so much because I'm just sitting here talking to you, but <laughs> You know, I'm constantly looking, you know, teaching myself editing things and I, there's a certain way that I want my videos to look and I, I don't, I don't upload them until they look like that, you know? So I, I there's times where I'm up all night, Shanice, we were up all night editing that Valentine's Day video. So, you know, it, it, it's not easy, but it's worth it because it's, it's nice to see your, your finished product feel accomplished when it's like, your video is now on YouTube, you know? And you can go back and watch it and be like, yo, I did that shit, you know? I did that. As basic as it is or as, as extensive as it is, you did it. That's your work, you know? And you can show people, like, I did this. So that's, that's the, you know, one of the more positive parts of it. It makes you feel good, you know? And it makes me feel good to know that there are people out there who do genuinely want to watch what, I, what I'm producing, what I'm putting out. And I appreciate you guys for that. I do. And um, I I made a promise to myself that I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a video once a week. So it's Thursday going into Friday. This will probably probably be Friday when you guys see this, because I'm gonna edit and upload it in the morning. So I made it for this week. I, I just made it. And. Um, Next week, uh, hopefully, I'm going to take this weekend, I'm going to start brainstorming some things. And if you guys have any ideas of things, you know, you would want to see that maybe you haven't seen before, leave them in the comments. I'm always up for suggestions. Um, I don't know when it comes to the Get Ready With Me videos, and please, 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 if you can, leave me feedback for this, because I really want to know. Do you guys prefer the ones, I watch a lot of Get Ready With Me, so those are my favorite kind of videos to watch, because I love the process of starting from beginning to end. But do you prefer voiceovers where I'm telling you what I'm doing, what products I'm using, blah, blah, blah? Or do you prefer the ones where it's just me, sped up, music, boom, 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 you know, scene by scene? Do you want a little bit of both? Um, a complete talk through video, you know, of me sitting in front of the camera, putting on my makeup and telling you and talking to you like this? Um, let me know, you know, because those are things that are going to, it's going to help me, you know, in this creative process and knowing what kind of content you do want to see because it's important to me and I know if you've been watching me from the the, the way back I did say that when I hit 1k I was going to do a giveaway and I never did 
and I'm about 24 subscribers, 23 away from hitting 2K. So I promise, right hand up to God, that I'm going to do a giveaway at 2K. I've already started compiling some things that I'm going to give away. I would like to do it where there's maybe two or three winners because I feel like that's fair. I don't want it to just be one. But you guys deserve it for, for sticking it out with me and you know any little bit of advertising you may have done, sharing my video on a Facebook page, whatever. I appreciate it. You deserve to be rewarded for that. So I'm gonna do a nice little goodie bag for you know maybe two or three of you just to show my appreciation for um sticking it sticking it out with me because this you could be watching anybody but you're watching me and i appreciate it so um i'm gonna end it here this video was long enough again me and my long ass videos but whatever like it is what it is <laughs> i'm long-winded so i hope that you guys are all doing well in your lives and I'll leave my contact info, my uh, Snapchat. Like I said, that's the only thing I have right now is Snapchat and YouTube. So um, you can go follow me on Snap. I'll leave my email if you need to talk. You know, if I don't respond right away or I don't respond at all, it's, but it's a possibility that I saw it, I read it, and I said, okay, I'm going to reply, and then I forgot. So give me some time. If like two weeks passes and you don't hear from me, comment on one of my videos and be like, yo, I emailed you. What's up? And then I'll go back and be like, oh, my bad. I meant to. I feel like I'm one of those people that is be like, yeah, I'm going to text her back. And then a week later, I'm like, ooh, I didn't, I didn't text you back. I'm sorry. <laughs> so just, just remind me. Um, it's not that I'm ignoring or being a, you know, a catty bitch or anything. I'm just, I forget. I'm forgetful as hell. But I do love hearing from you guys. And I love when you reach out. And I, I, I do want to be, I want to be on that level with you because... I know it means something, and I know that if somebody did it for me, it would be very valuable to me. So, I'm done. I feel better. I've had this makeup on all day. I don't know if you can see my little wing that I did. It came out very nice. I'm very proud. And uh, I'm going to go wash my face, take this wig off, and get in my bed and cuddle with my son. So, take care. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.